scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Let it be so. Amen. Prophesy. Let increase be so. Let lifting be so. Let spiritual fire be so. Let favor be so. Amen. 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 Listen. Please listen to me. A believer is not just one who has received of the life of God. A believer is one who has been mandated to reveal the glory of God. Comes from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek is doxa. A manifestation of that glory. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men. He wants them to see, John 15 and verse 8, that as they see that light, they will glorify God. The glory of God is a capture of everything that makes God God. His wisdom, his wealth, his power, his presence, his anointing. Everything that makes God God should be revealed. So when we say amen, we are not just speaking English. We are prophesying. Everything in you that can find expression in me, let it find expression. If your favor can find expression, let it find expression. If your wisdom can find expression, let it find expression. If your power can find expression, let it find expression. For thine is the kingdom. Forever and ever. Amen. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Forever and ever. My prayer for you is Galatians 1 24 very simple but powerful scripture it says and they glorified God in me that when men look at your life you become a living epistle always and they glorified God in me and they glorified God in me let me speak over someone's life here the kind of favor there is a grace that i'm praying for you is from the depth of my heart in the name that is above all names the kinds of favor that will even cause kings to say you are favored may that grace rest upon you now favor at the gates favor in the city favor among kings favor among nobles in the name of jesus take it as a signature upon your life no power in existence can shut the gates of systems and structures over you take this grace work wonders with it 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Our possibilities in this kingdom are predicated upon the kind and the level of grace that is upon us. Men are defined not just by the colors of their skin, not just by their height or physiology. Exploits in this kingdom, among many other factors, depend on the grace the investment of the Holy Spirit that is resident upon the life of a man. When the grace of God is upon you, you always will not look like it, except that your results keep signing that you are it. <laughs> Hallelujah. One prayer point tonight. Holy Spirit, in a mighty way, rest upon my life. Let the beauty, the power, the glory that comes with knowing you let there be such an evidence an effulgence of your grace upon my life lift your voice and pray koinonia all the overflows pray outside pray following online pray the holy spirit is the beautifier of destinies he's the one given by god to help us without the ministry of the holy spirit we are just actors on stage wasting our time and the time of others but not when the holy spirit is there the bible says now the lord is that spirit now the lord is that spirit now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is he says there is liberty hallelujah thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done the holy spirit was given to us to bring beauty and glory out of our lives it's not a pentecostal phenomenon thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit holy spirit you are welcome fill this temple with your presence let it be a prayer from the depth of your heart holy spirit you are welcome fill this temple with your presence we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait Church. to mature the church in experience into the bride of Christ there are men that ignore you there are others who assume you are not there men have called you several names some have mistaken you for an angel others have called you wind others have called you fire but we know you are the living god the spirit of god and tonight we submit ourselves to your wisdom we submit ourselves to your power we submit ourselves to your ministry You know why we take our time like this to thank God? We are not wasting our time. We know where he brought us from. The Bible declares some may trust in horses, others chariots, but we. 
when you are thoughtful and you have the intelligence to think then you will give him glory unashamedly is a mighty god there is no time spent in worship that is a waste you are bigger than what we say 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 you are bigger than what we say you are higher than what we say You are better than what we say. Say, say, say. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Oh, there's such a mighty anointing in this place. Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, you are the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, the Holy. Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, take your place, take your place, take your place, take your place. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Breathe on me. Salabalaka sudiada. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Open my eyes, Lord. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. We honor you, we reverence you, great spirit of God. The helper of destinies. The maker of men. I want to know you. I want to see your face. I want to call you Lord. I want to touch you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you more. It's my prayer Lord. I want to know you I want to see your face I want to know you Holy Spirit may we never be too familiar with your presence in this place we are people you have helped we are people you have shown grace mercy and while the world celebrates us what they see as our achievements we return to you in worship and in awe of your goodness you are the wisdom behind every result in this house it is by your power oh god that we are able to run through a troop indeed it's by your grace that we can leap over walls you have given us a name and a praise even among the nations we return thanks spirit of the living god you are
and tonight we have come as a family within this nation and all across the world to learn we have come to see you we have come to encounter your grace we have come to be shifted by your power scripture declares they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the lord even in zion this is zion a house you have so beautified with your glory we thank you oh may the nations learn from us that it is only by the power of the spirit that we excel that by the arm of flesh no man can prevail some trust in horses others chariots but there is a generation that trusts in the name of our god by our worship oh god may we mentor nations may we mentor kings may we teach them the excellency of a relationship with you tonight oh god be lifted in and through our lives in jesus name blessings to you again please be seated hallelujah amen tonight we're going to be praying but then we're going to be dealing with a subject that is so personal and so dear to me we're going to be exploring the subject of the Holy Spirit and in every generation it seems like there are a few people who seem to come into a level of relationship and union with this strange ancient spirit and by whatever means when they do come into that relationship some of them unlearned people some of them weak people relegated to the backside but it seemed as though when they met this personality regardless their sociological orientations he seemed to have lifted them to very strange levels of impact and then you find out that when they leave it looks like there is a decline in the understanding of his person again and then once and again he will find someone else who he will use as a specimen to show the nations who he is and what he is able to do oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Please, I'd like you to be sensitive as I teach. We're discussing the Holy Spirit here. Many of you will be introduced to realms and dimensions in the Spirit tonight that will surprise you. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Living God. I started my journey with God not looking for fame, not looking for power, not looking for ministry. It was a blind but sincere pursuit that if there was more in God then peradventure my life could be a revelation of that more even to a generation I went to church and I found out that while preachers preach they preach powerful messages and whilst they were preaching I saw sick people whilst they were preaching I saw confused people oppressed people and yet they opened scripture they spoke so intelligently about the love of god they spoke so articulately about the power of god his power to heal 
his power to deliver kalikas kada brende ke parusia shilas ka brante ke libre getia ke la karusa ziana has kataba ke ligarito si atakata to said the lord i'm bringing you closer i am bringing you closer i'm drawing you to deeper levels with me i am drawing you to deeper levels with me i am drawing you to deeper levels with me oh 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 eh 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 ala dati salena kateba la kusia and when they shared the grace i saw sick people walking back sick we ended the average church service like this may the grace of our lord jesus christ we said then we said the love of god the fellowship of the holy spirit and we confessed that it should rest and abide with us and yet people walked as though they were living a funeral where was the power where was the grace I saw how people prayed begging God to show up the more I read my Bible I became confused someone is missing something somewhere I had encounters that I could not explain I had the opportunity to meet a few well-meaning sincere veterans of the gospel I asked them questions about the Holy Spirit. They waved it with some theological answers. And I said, no, no. Let me tell you one of the ways that God draws you into intimacy. He will reveal a dimension of himself to you and hide it back. He hides it back so that you will begin to seek him. The dimension he hides back is a realm he wants to become your habitation. But he hides it so that you will prove your pursuit your hunger and I began to pray I said Lord there has to be men and women who don't just talk about spiritual things but are able to demonstrate it with their lives then I picked a book one day called God's generals when I picked that book and I opened it I could not close it again it was as though I was reading about my relatives. I said, this is it. This is what I've been trying to ask. This is what I've been trying to seek. Men who subdued kingdoms, shut the mouth of lions. They lived like gods upon the earth. Then I began to study the history of the church in Nigeria. And I came across strange men like Archbishop Benson Idahosa. Men who shook this nation, not another nation. I read about men like Apostle Babalola. Men who carried power with God. And I said, something is wrong with your body, oh God when did we reduce the power of god and the ministry of the holy spirit to a theological dissertation where did we hide the demonstration of his power we call it the house of god we claim that god is there and yet people come and they are not changed and when the call of god came upon my life i said lord do not send me without me knowing the holy spirit what will be my my message to this arrogant world when i stand before kings and nobles who will i tell them send me and that began my journey my pursuit that desperate search for the person of the holy spirit I heard men like Benny Hinn talk about him. Benny Hinn would stand on stage and talk how that Catherine Kuhlman would say, do not grieve my friend and sob on the stage. Where was that passion? Where did it go?
today we have written books about him and yet we do not know him we have organized conferences after his name yet we do not know him we have packed crusade grounds and we're utterly disappointed and revealed from our flaws the disconnect as far as our relationship is with him to the point where we do not even know his power again when we see him move we are not sure if he's the one and yet i read from scripture and i studied from history that he was the force behind the enviable liftings of men the force behind the rising of people he was the one who lifted politicians like daniel lifted men like joseph empowered women like mary strengthened men like elijah how would we want a great destiny ignoring his ministry and his person listen to me god did not give us a religion it was an experience it still is an experience introducing to us this personality that has been so misunderstood we call him oil he's not oil we call him a bird he's not a bird we call him wind he's not wind we call him fire he's not fire he is the holy ghost the spirit of the living god he is the holy ghost scepter of the king of kings he is the holy ghost seal of the age to come is changing everything tonight swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life it's a little here a little dear and then your day will dawn he's at work in you changing everything in obedience to Christ let's sit down if you can the Holy Spirit he is called who is he why is he so important that Jesus had to wait for his arrival to begin his ministry Jesus the logos of God remained so important until he arrived having mentored his disciples over a period of three and a half years he says tarry tarry do not use zeal to start tarry until he comes he is so important wait until he comes I pray we are able to teach tonight there is such a strong atmosphere of his presence God is introducing many of you afresh into the ministry it's like an initiation because there are many of you the call of God is upon your life oh yes there are many of you the call of God is upon your life there is a generation that must seek the face of the God of Jacob the call of God is upon your life you may not look like it but I tell you there is a call of God you are the answer to the age-long prayer of mothers the fasting of mothers can you find someone that you will use from this family and his hand has been trailing you for years now he's found you and for those of you watching and following this is not some Pentecostal jamboree this is the spirit of the living God stirring up a move
we listen you see you will not know what is happening to you now till you get out of this place and then you begin to see doors open in ways you cannot explain doors you have tried politically to open and it did not open by the connections of men when the holy ghost steps in it does not waste your time people are not just falling down and shouting there is a recreation happening over destinies there there are alignments happening perhaps some of you are in ministry here no power no grace you struggle no nothing it's because you are just doing ministry just from a book produced by zondervan respectfully speaking let him come and back you and you will watch the wonder walking power of the spirit of god you've done business on your own but let him come and hold your hands and you watch the frequency the grace we are all ordinary except that when he comes to us when he comes with us we become instruments of marvel and wonder first to ourselves then to all and sundry please be seated if you can just help those under the anointing don't worry you know you met him oppressions just living just like that yokes that cannot stand his presence just living just like that covenants ordinances speakings that men have vowed that provided you are from this lineage you cannot rise who shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass when the lord himself has not said so satan only looks as powerful as the absence of the holy spirit makes it for the light shineth in darkness john 1 5 and the darkness comprehended it not before i get into the word let me speak to you if you are sick in your body here i stretch my hands right now fibroids every devil of oppression i stretch my hands be healed now be healed now i bring you the life and the glory of heaven help them please be healed now high blood pressure goes down now every kind of medical diagnosis we bring it under the influence of the spirit in the name of jesus christ every organ malfunctioning we declare a correction now and for every missing organ we declare creation of a new one now pain around the limbs be healed right now any genotype problems blood group problems we change it now in the name of jesus and any altar that has refused to let you go no matter how long in the name of jesus we scatter those altars we scatter those kapakatos katia we scatter those altars let god's people go altars of delay oppression by the power of the holy spirit keeping families down keeping destinies down keeping businesses down abuja hear the word of the lord nigeria hear the word of the lord we come by the rod of a higher priesthood let god's people go now every gate that will not open for you 
we not only open it we scatter it so that your children can pass we scatter it in the name of jesus christ gates of stagnation gates of shame and reproach be scattered in the name of jesus open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray we scatter this gate by the power that raised christ from the dead we come by the agency of the spirit and we make declarations of power hallelujah listen please listen before you sit down i need to tell you this i made a covenant with god that there is nobody who will ever come for one koinonia service and sit down and share the grace and say i wasted my time no for as long as i am breathing and for as long as god gives me the privilege to represent him through this platform if you ever find your way here and sit down here i assure you the things that will change in your life in one single service will surprise you it is not pride we speak as touching the grace he has given it is wickedness and even evil to keep you here for hours and those following online waste your time and just share the grace no sir it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted lifted above all the mountains and other hills and nations shall flow to it they will say to one another come let us go to the mount of the lord the house of jacob he will teach us his ways the bible says we have not only come to learn we have come to experience please be seated if you can again let's see how far the Lord can help us tonight anyone under the anointing close to you whilst I teach whether you are an usher or not just help them we glorify you O God in Jesus name let's spend a few minutes teaching the word and then we'll pray we are a people who embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit in his entirety. But we are also a people who have profound honor and value for the word of God. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Acts 20, 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. The Bible says which is able to number one build you up it is only the word of god that is able to build men number two to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified the bible says and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise even unto salvation hallelujah when we invest time learning the word we are learning the modus operandi of the kingdom we are allowing the mind of christ philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 he says let this mind be in you permit this mind this thinking this ideology to be in you which was also in christ jesus the word of god gives us enlightenment spiritual illumination access to light and john 1 5 says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not he said that was the true light that lighted every man hallelujah he came to bear witness to the light john 1 verse 6 there was a man the bible says sent from god whose name was john next verse says the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through his witness might believe verse 8 it says he was not that light he was only sent to bear witness of that light 9 says 
that was the true light Jesus by the ministry of the Holy Spirit the light that lighted every man his ministry is for every man not just church people every man are we blessed now let me just give a little theological background theologically speaking there are certain words you've heard me say it again that there are certain words that even though used in the christian faith are not found verbatim in scripture there are a number of them we use them as a lingua franca among believers but then these are not words that are captured in scripture one of it is the word rapture you will not find any word rapture in scripture are we together but then we know that there is an event that we call rapture praise the name of the lord another word is trinity you never find oh by the way let's bless azaria family they are following right now let's give them a big 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 god bless you hallelujah praise the name of the lord so the word trinity because before i begin to talk about the holy spirit i need to clear the air over an issue that has remained for very long in the body of christ the confusion as to the triune nature of god is being a confusion among believers among bible scholars there have been different schools of thought as to the triune nature of god the bible says here o israel the lord our god is one lord and so many people have used that scripture to negate the existence of divinity in a tripartite form are we together it seems as though there are three gods the father the son and the holy spirit which one do we worship which one do we serve and it's brought a lot of confusion so when we teach about the ministry of the holy spirit there is further confusion again if this is not clear and the reason is because the holy spirit happens to be largely invisible and there has been no direct revelation of his form in terms of his human form are we together but then let me just take two or three minutes to let you know that the concept of the triune nature of god is a fact the bible does tell us that even though god is the god of the universe his operation is tripartite the father the son and the holy spirit this is a foundational understanding to the christian faith if you do not believe this something might be wrong with your conviction are we together now that it is true that the father the son and the holy spirit we call it the godhead the word one god does not mean a singular it means unity hear ye o israel the lord our god is one lord united is that true genesis chapter one let's go to the book of the beginnings now theologically speaking every time you want to examine a body of spiritual truth a subject um you begin your study from there's what we call the law of first mention so you go to scripture and then the context with which that word was mentioned first is the context that guides you as you study that subject are we together so we go to the book of beginnings genesis chapter one in the beginning the bible says god god created the heaven and the earth verse two it says and the earth was without form and void now you would notice um let me not assume genesis 1 verse 1 and genesis 1 verse 2 it seems like a contrast because according to the character of god's creation everything he creates is good is that true now we see that god created the heavens and the earth verse 1 and then verse 2 now says the earth was without form again so what was god creating the earth was without form void darkness was upon the face of the deep the hebrew expression tohu wa bohu confusion and chaos and then the bible says please go to verse 2 just keep it there verse 2 
it says and the spirit of god so we see that the first the first dimension of the godhead revealed in scripture was the holy spirit and he was called the spirit of god he moved upon the face of the waters just for knowledge genesis 1 verse 2 came as a result of the judgment of lucifer right genesis 1 verse 1 and genesis 1 verse 2 did not just happen within a short time span now you know that the bible is a piece of literature and it was written uh, with with honor to all the principles of literature meaning that it was written largely in summary are we together now you would think that it just happened again and again there were prophets in the bible that never met themselves they were hundreds of years apart but when you read them because you are reading a summary it looked like one just died and next week the other one started no hallelujah so lucifer was judged in genesis 1 verse 1 god created the heavens and the earth and then the gap between genesis 1 verse 1 1 verse 2 in theology is called the gap theory it's an attempt to explain what happened the hundreds of years apart that would have led to this chaos and confusion because genesis 1 verse 2 is not an expression of the character of god outside of the influence of another deity the earth being dark and formless was as a result of the judgment so what you call creation story in genesis chapter 1 is actually a re-creation story that was not the original creation are we together job in the height of his frustration when you read chapter 38 i'm just giving us an introduction just a background in chapter 38 job was so frustrated because of his predicaments the bible says he summoned god and god came to him in a whirlwind and said who is this that dark not counsel without knowledge he says guard your loins as a man and i would demand of you answer me question one where was thou when i laid the foundations of the earth so there was a day the foundations of the earth was laid we don't see that in the genesis account are we together now he says declare if thou hast understanding verse 2 he says who had laid the measure thereof if thou knowest in fact let me tell you this for your knowledge i hope you realize that what we call the garden of eden the garden of the lord that we call eden where adam and eve the east side of the eden was where they were kept the first occupant according to the revelation that scripture brings in the garden of eden was lucifer himself thou was in eden the garden of the lord you now see the vendetta between lucifer and man because lucifer was an expression of god to the then creation the word eternity means the formation of infinite dispensations we are not the first of the human race no we are just a little above six thousand years science show us the existence of a lot of humanoid species before us there's nothing um there's nothing false about it adam hmm, understand what i'm saying now i'm teaching koinonia and then those who are interested in learning through this platform i know why i'm saying what i just said now adam is not the first man no adam was the first man created in the image there was a dispensation where lucifer was head over them he was a representation what adam what god brought man to do there was a dispensation that lucifer was mandated to be the revelation of god to them and on account of that assignment he's making angels cherubs were not made from dust they were made from quantized light light the depreciation of their body but the degree to which the light upon them excels that is the degree to which they have visited the throne room because every time they meet him is a law to both human and angels that as we behold him we are changed are we together now yes so lucifer it was on the strength of his build up the dexterity of his making 
that pride came upon him are we together yes there's no time to begin to talk about lucifer lucifer was that cherub the bible says that cover it he was in eden the garden of the lord the entire object of his making was he was he was an artistry of god and his assignment was the custodian the light bearer revelations are stored as light and that was his office the son of the morning on account of the revelations of god that he had he built pride and said do you know what if this is all that makes god god then i have the secrets to be god i will exalt myself above the stars of god he said i will be like the most high treason was found in him he wanted to run a parallel government so you can choose either god or him and there was war in heaven now don't downplay the level of lucifer's intelligence even in heaven he deceived one third of the angels wow what would he have told them that made one third of the angels to literally leave their original estate the bible says and there was judgment in heaven michael the archangel you see that they met again over the body of moses you again they met michael said don't waste my time the lord rebuke you so now it was the judgment that came as a result of the fall of lucifer when you read the book of revelations it says woe to the inhabitants of the earth for lucifer that great dragon has been cast into the earth he has come with anger and fury that's why uncontrolled anger is the most classic proof that there is a spirit manipulating you yes sir lucifer came down to the earth with anger and he was hovering around the face of the waters it was the judgment of lucifer that led to genesis 1 verse 2 do you understand now so genesis 1 verse 3 is god now bringing light what light this was not sunlight i hope you know sunlight was created in day four this was the light that the life-giving factor of creation he withdrew it in the judgment of lucifer and so now god said light be that's the original hebrew rendition light be and there was light and then he began to create everything and he saw that it was good and so on and so forth and then when we get to genesis chapter 1 verse 26 this is the first classic expression that proves the triune nature of god and god said let us let us so this was this was a parliament there was a meeting going on not let me let us but this does not automatically tell you whether there are three there could be ten let us so how do we know that it is the father the son and the holy spirit are we learning next scripture very quickly matthew chapter 3 please from verse 14 this is the baptism of jesus now look up please a little background again about jesus i hope you know that jesus came to the earth for many reasons principally to be a mediator to bring many sons into glory are we together he came and as, ex and as an expression of the love of the father this was revealed through his substitutionary sacrifice to the end that whosoever believes in him that report might receive the life of god in the flesh to show us that it was possible to live a victorious life the third reason why he came was to become a marking script a correction over our perceptions about god because until jesus came there were many things about god that people did not know they did not have the rich um opportunity to enjoy the ministry of the holy spirit to the degree to which we enjoy he would come upon them and then go away he did not have a permanent residence within them so they credited all kinds of things to god jesus came as god's manual god's reference point so that everything you thought god did or was you looked at the life of jesus to correct your orientation are we together now matthew chapter 3 please thank you jesus is someone learning but john forbade him saying this was jesus at the baptism now i have need to be baptized of thee and thou comest to me and jesus answering said unto him suffer it to be so now for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness then he allowed him 
next verse now watch this and jesus the logos of god john 1 1 remember in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god the same was with god so we see two there the word and god the same was with god even though he was god also now the bible says and jesus so we see that jesus was there when he was baptized he went straight out of the water and lo the heavens were open and he saw the spirit of god are you seeing now so this is jesus walking on earth in the flesh the heavens open and the holy spirit descending upon him lightning upon him like a dove 17 and then a voice which is not the holy spirit this is jesus on earth this is the holy spirit coming and another third voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son whoever calls him father what should be his name whoever calls jesus son must be jesus proved that he was father when he called jesus i mean uh, god proved that he was father when he called jesus so jesus the word the spirit of the living god the father one last proof in the mouth of two or three witnesses a matter is established matthew 28 the great commission from verse 18 matthew chapter 28 from verse 18 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth next verse go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of this is jesus talking now baptizing them in the name of the father of the son of the holy ghost he didn't mention any fourth person so we know from the mouth of jesus that the godhead is trinity jesus himself spoke are you ready for one last proof acts chapter 7 this was the matthias stephen about to be stoned acts chapter 7 from verse 54 please acts chapter 7 don't be tired of learning scripture it gives you accuracy of understanding and then you are able to walk in the reality of the power and the grace of god on the strength of the spiritual illumination you have it says when they had heard these things they were caught to the heart and gnashed when they heard these things they were caught to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth verse 55 now the bible says but he stephen now being full of the holy ghost so who was in stephen the holy spirit he looked steadfastly into heaven what did he see the glory of god and then jesus standing at the right hand so we see the holy spirit in stephen god manifesting in his glory the father and the son standing at his right hand why am i saying this thing so that you will believe from scripture not from opinion not from charismatism from scripture if your confidence is just based on what someone said it would dwindle with time but when your faith is anchored on scripture it becomes unbending you become immovable are we together now now the word spirit comes from the latin word spiritus it means breath spiritus S P I S Numa. All mean the same thing. These are expressions of spirit. Are we together? So a spirit, typically speaking, um, generally, it just means the life-giving factor of anything. The life-giving factor of anything is the spirit of that thing. Are we together? General. Who is the Holy Spirit? number one the holy spirit is god acts chapter 5 from verse 3 to 4 please the holy spirit is god this was the story of ananias and sapphira we are proving that the holy spirit is not just an archangel there are many well-meaning sincere people who have carried teachings all around the holy spirit is not an archangel the holy spirit is not a man the holy spirit is God in every way he's not junior to God he's not one of the errant people in heaven he is God in every way but Peter said Ananias why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to 
the Holy Ghost. Are you saying that now? And to keep back part of the price of the land. Verse 4. Whilst it remained, was it not thine? After it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied to men, but to God. Peter now says, you have lied to the Holy Ghost. And then you have lied to God. The Holy Ghost is God in every way. Number two, very quickly. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the presence and the power of God. The Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the presence and the power of God. He is not just the manifestation. He is the revealer of the presence and the power of God. The Holy Spirit. Benny Hinn calls him the unlimited presence of Jesus. How true based on scripture. He gives omnipotence to the presence. Of, he could only be in one location at a time. But now the Holy Spirit has come to multiply the influence of Jesus across the earth. He is the continuation of the ministry of Jesus. But now not just localized to one man. He can be everywhere at the same time. So the Holy Spirit is a revealer. He is also the manifestation of the presence of God. Are we learning? This is very, very important. Number three, very quickly. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Bible calls the Holy Spirit the wisdom of God. This is very powerful. Wisdom. The wisdom of God. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2. Isaiah 11 and verse 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, he says, the Spirit of wisdom. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of wisdom. That means he is the life-giving force behind every manifestation of divine wisdom. There are three levels of wisdom as the Bible teaches. There is wisdom that comes from above, that is first pure. There is wisdom that is scientific, Sophia that comes with experimentation and experience there is wisdom that is diabolical and demonic the wisdom we are talking about is wisdom that comes from above are we together the spirit of wisdom ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 paul is praying now ephesians 1 and verse 17 that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom so the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of wisdom. Next point. Who is the Holy Spirit? This is a very, very important point I'm about to bring about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the author of scripture. The Holy Spirit is the authentic author of scripture. Not just Paul not just david the psalmist not just matthew mark luke and john the holy spirit is the author of scripture second peter chapter 1 please and verse 21 second peter chapter 1 and verse 21 second peter 1 21 hallelujah You can't find it go to second timothy chapter 3 from verse 15. second timothy 3 from verse 15 and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make thee wise unto salvation listen carefully through faith which is in jesus christ next verse it says all scripture how many all scripture old testament the gospel acts of the apostles the epistles revelation all scripture is given by inspiration of god by inspiration of god is profitable for doctrine reproof correction instruction in righteousness verse 16 it says 17 now that the man of god may be mature 
and furnished unto all good works i don't know why they didn't find second peter is a mistake from me it says holy men wrote as they were inspired of the spirit so holy men only did the writing the author was god how many of you have seen people who translate the messages of others into books the translators cannot say the book is their own is that true the original person thank you second peter 1 21 for prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man but holy men spake as they were moved by the holy ghost if you help me transcribe my thoughts into a book you will be rewarded for your intelligence but the creativity and the intellectual property remains my own is that true so who really is the author of scripture no it can't be peter it can't be john they were moved by the holy spirit why is this important because if you ignore the holy spirit in an attempt to learn scripture you will end up in error listen carefully the source of error the real source of error is to just be scientific about the bible and ignore the person of the holy spirit in as much as the bible is truly an archaeological book a historical book a piece of literature but it is empowered with mysteries that only the author can unravel if the holy spirit does not assist you in opening scripture then you find out that you'll be reading history you'll be reading archaeology you'll be reading literature poetry and not have the requisite level of edification that comes with this this book is both closed and sealed you can open it but only the holy spirit can unlock the seals are we together the holy spirit is the author of scripture that means the next time you open your bible to study the publishers of this book were not the authors of the book they only made it available to us holy spirit you are the author of scripture open my eyes and you will be surprised at the things that you will see it says open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things from out of thy law is god blessing us the holy spirit is the author of scripture now the holy spirit was revealed in the old testament like we know he came upon great men and women to do exploits but the character of his manifestation listen carefully you would notice that there was hardly a description of deep intimacy and fellowship with the holy spirit in fact the person who came closest as far as relationship with the holy spirit is concerned was david the man david cast me not away from your presence he said take not your spirit from me are we together but generally speaking the holy spirit would come upon men in the old testament prophets priests kings and then he would perform something supernatural through them and return back so they knew his power but they did not have the opportunity to know and learn the holy spirit in a very intimate way they experienced the power of the holy spirit but they did not have the privilege of what we call today koinonia the fellowship of the spirit hallelujah are we still together christianity becomes a religion if and when the ministry of the holy spirit is ignored it is the presence and the ministry of the holy spirit in this faith work that gives excitement to this adventure he is responsible for the exploits that men and women command in this kingdom write this down please it was the holy spirit who birthed the church romans chapter 8 and verse 15 you also find that in acts chapter 2 from verse 1 the holy spirit was the one who birthed the church the bible says for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby as a family we can now cry abba father he brought us into this family acts chapter 2 and verse 1 when you read the bible says when the day of pentecost was fully come they were gathered together in one accord suddenly verse 2 there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty a rushing mighty wind it filled the house where they were sitting there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire 
and he came and sat on each of them uh -huh. verse 4 the bible says and they were filled with the holy ghost so the holy ghost birthed the church and if the church ignores him today then we'll become something else aside the church are we together we must bring back to our consciousness the person and the ministry of the holy spirit beyond religion beyond the fivefold let me tell you this the holy spirit is not a privilege of men and women of god in the gospel no the holy spirit is for everyone he's not just for pastors apostles prophet believer and non-believer and creation generally speaking it's more than just the salvation experience as you'll be learning shortly are we together praise the name of the lord because for many people the moment you begin to talk of the ministry of the holy spirit here's what they tell you i'm not called into ministry just leave me i'm a businessman i will keep giving you money while you keep knowing him and go and do your crusade there show us the ancient path will you lead us along we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest will you show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter now listen the holy spirit is not only god i want you to know that the holy spirit is a person he has the attributes of personhood this is very powerful the holy spirit i've told you here that he's not just wind he manifests as all those elements but he's not them the holy spirit has the attributes of person of personhood he has a personality what makes someone a personality the presence of a will the presence of emotions the presence of an intellect there's no time to begin to deal with this but let's I, I've, I've done the, this teaching um, describing the personhood of the Holy Spirit but for the sake of what we're dealing with tonight let's just look at it one scripture each wheel number one Acts chapter 16 from verse 6 to 7 please very quickly help us we're proving that the Holy Spirit is a person the Bible says when they had gone throughout all the region of galatia they were forbidden of the holy ghost he has a will the holy spirit forbade them verse 7. it says and after they were come to all of those names they went to those places but the holy spirit suffered them not he restrained them the holy spirit has an independent will it's very important first corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11 first corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11 11 but all these walk at that one and the same self spirit dividing to every man severally as he wills the holy spirit has a will the holy spirit has emotions ephesians 4 and verse 30 ephesians 4 and verse 30 the holy spirit has emotions the bible says grieve not the holy spirit if he was not sensitive to that action the bible would not ask you to not grieve him he says grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby you were sealed unto the day of redemption the holy spirit has intellect intelligence romans 8 27 romans 8 27 the bible says he that searched the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit why because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of god he knows what is the mind of the spirit first corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10 write it down please first corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10 we're looking at 10 and 11 the bible says but god had revealed them to us by his spirit for the spirit searches there is intelligence with the spirit the holy spirit is not a robot there is intelligence to him he searches all things yea the deep things of god for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man 
but the spirit of God. The Bible reveals to us very quickly the purpose of the Holy Spirit. We need to know why the Holy Spirit was sent. Why do we talk so much about him? Why did Jesus talk so much about him? The Holy Spirit has basically a threefold a threefold ministry a threefold ministry number one he has the ministry of conviction number two the holy spirit he goes this is the scope of his assignment conviction what does it mean to convict to bring to your awareness to compel you to pay attention to an object or a truth the holy spirit he's the one behind every kind of godly conviction number two the ministry of transformation what is transformation the name given to the process that makes you like christ in experience is called transformation my little children he says on whom i travail until christ be formed in you then the ministry of empowerment what does it mean to empower to empower means to engrace you to engrace you so that you are able to produce results that ordinarily you would not be able to produce are we together all of the long stories that i started with giving the theological background is to this intent listen carefully this is the core of my teaching now anywhere you find the holy spirit on earth it is one of these three things he's doing conviction transformation empowerment look at me uh, we're going to discuss his ministry uh, and the objects the recipients who are the candidates that qualify for his ministry but until then i want you to understand something every time you see an unbeliever the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation never forget this the greatest need of an unbeliever is not house rent the greatest need of an unbeliever is not the hospital the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation the greatest need of a believer is transformation when a believer is saved the next assignment of the holy spirit is to sponsor transformation an heir for as long as he's a child the bible says he differeth not from a slave though he be lord of all are we together transformation then the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment this is the sequence every time look just learning this alone will make you a matured christian so you you know how to bless people according to the categories when you see an unbeliever your principal assignment is to stand in partnership with the holy spirit to the end that he becomes a recipient of the life of god no matter what you do to an unbeliever if he has not received salvation you have not given him the greatest gift for a believer the greatest gift you can give a believer is an atmosphere and an information that can lead to transformation you can give miracles you can build a house you can bring breakthrough you can bring healing none of those things are superior in themselves the most superior blessing that you can give a believer is access to light illumination bringing him to a place of transformation then for a believer that is transformed the greatest need for a transformed believer is now to be able to prove and defend his proposition and for that you will need empowerment are you seeing that now just having this knowledge alone will make you such a mature christian and you will know how to help people you don't start talking about salvation to one who is already saved except you're just teaching him and mentoring him to also be an effective evangelist a non-believer salvation a believer transformation a transformed believer empowerment are we together and may i add that the greatest need of an empowered believer is character and humility when a believer is empowered he now needs character and humility because knowledge can puff up hello scriptures exhort us 
from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.